take a deep look at how cardiovascular computed tomography can help your patients. Join one of SCCT's hands-on workshops to get real case experience. With virtual access to reading software, learners interact with image-based cases while being guided by experts. SCCT workshops cover a wide range of topics, such as coronary evaluation, plaque features, graphs, valvular heart disease, transcatheter valve planning, structural heart disease, congenital heart disease, masses, pericardial pathology, and other commonly encountered clinical scenarios. All workshops include case credit and CME. Visit scct.org slash workshops for more information. That's scct.org slash workshops. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Donut of Destiny, the podcast on all things cardiac CT for anyone interested in cardiovascular imaging. My name is Praveen Ranganath, and I'm a radiologist in Dallas, Texas. On today's episode, a friend and colleague of mine, Dr. Soterios Evangelou, will be taking the reins. Soterios had the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Daniela Andreni on this episode, a true legend in the field of cardiac CT and interventional imaging. Soterios and Daniela discussed the recently published expert consensus document for pre-procedural planning of coronary revascularization using cardiac CT. Dr. Andrani is the lead author of this expert consensus document. This episode is jam-packed with info on the utility of cardiac CT in extensively calcified plaques, chronic total occlusions in myocardial perfusion imaging, FFRCT, and more. Well, let's go ahead and tune into that conversation now. Hello, I am Sotidios Evangelo, a consultant cardiologist at the Interbalkan Medical Center of Thessaloniki, Greece, and the first committee of SCCT. And here we are with Professor Andreini, a real pioneer in the field of cardiac CT, and discussing about the recent consensus document of pre-procedural planning of coronary revascularization by cardiac computer tomography. So, Professor, a pioneer, as I said, but you can still introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Tirius. So my name is Daniel Andraini. I'm a professor of cardiovascular disease from Milan University, and I'm director of a division of cardiology and cardiac imaging at the University Hospital Galeazzi Sant'Ambrogio. I am a cardiologist and radiologist. Mm, very nice, Daniele. So CCPA has a high diagnostic accuracy for detecting CAD, and furthermore, can play up pivotal role in the management of patients with low to intermediate pretest probability for coronary artery disease. However, in more complex cases, it is still regarded and insufficient. This new consensus document of yours has emerged in the right time, I must say, with the recent advances, such as improved temporal and spatial resolution or capability of calcium removal by dual energy CP. What is the rationale for the use of coronary CT angiograph for planning coronary vascularization, Professor? So I fully agree with you. So in one end, the technical improvement in the last 10 years in the field of cardiac CT in the spatial and temporal resolution, but also in uh, tissue characterization allows to a little bit overcome some uh, limitation related to the modern artifacts, for example, in Pacific lesion. But on the other end, we have uh, the functional method developed from CT, CTFFR and perfusion, that allows also to add in functional information to the anatomy. And finally, what is important to underline is that some uh, uh, historical weakness of the method, for example, the high-density artifacts, particularly related to heavy calcific lesion, may become a, a plus, a benefit for uh, planning intervention and procedure because, uh, as you know, the invasive coronary angiography is limited in terms of uh, depiction of the presence, of the extent, and of the distribution of coronary calcification. And this may be a strong advantage if you have uh, a roadmap of a calcific lesion by CT but CT may also provide the intervention with other information that may be useful for planning procedure. For example, to identify the true normal to normal, to characterize the plaque, 
to avoid to land the stands in a fully calcite, in a fully lipidic plaque that this can lead, for example, to complication. Or to know well if uh, there is bifurcation lesion, what is the status, for example, of the ostium of the collateral branch. So many information that can uh, help the interventionalist in uh, planning the procedure. A little bit more about the CTFFR, which is nowadays an established method that allows non-invasive estimation of pressure dropping during hyperemia from a standard CCTA with a high accuracy and agreement with an invasive FFR. What is its role in guiding coronary vascularization, actually? So I think that in particular in the intermediate lesion in terms of anatomy, And, of course, in the calcific lesion where CTA has been demonstrated to make sometimes an overestimation of the true uh, severity of the lesion, FFRCT may help in identifying uh, the functional relevant stenosis. And the major advantage for intervention is that it's a bit of lesion specific. So you can assess millimeter by millimeter the value of FFR and the drop across the lesion. Nowadays, apart from the absolute value and the end of the vessel, the delta across the lesion, more than 0.1, has been associated with a particularly uh, relevance of this type of stenosis in terms of, from a, a functional point of view. Mm-hmm. And what about CTMPI? As we know, compared to CCTA alone, the addition of uh, CTMPI improves the diagnostic accuracy for the functional assessment of coronary artery disease. The report is sensitivity and the specificity yields between 82 to 92 and 73 to 86 percent respectively. Can contribute in patients with untreated CAT and in revascularization patients too. Uh, yeah, of course. So I think in comparison with uh, FFRCT, the major advantage of uh, stress myocardial CT perfusion is that this is uh, an uh, inside meeting. So then uh, it's cheap, does not require external correlate, and of course uh, allows for uh, identifying functional significance of the lesion in both uh, native coronary arteries, such as FFRCT, but also in already revascularized patient, this means a stent or cabbage patient. Of course, as drawback of the method, we have to underline that both modalities, static or dynamic CT perfusion, uh, account for more radiation exposure and more contrast agent than uh, the standard anatomical CTCA. Okay. And then uh, another aspect dealing within the document are the chronic total occlusion, defined as occluded coronary arteries with a TIMI score of zero and with an estimated duration of above three months. The prevalence of this finding among patients referred for CCTA is low, of about 1.54%. The reason is clear, though. Can we take advantage of performing a CCTA in patients with uh, CTO and maximize their procedural success? Yeah, so I think uh, also reviewing the literature for preparing this uh, consensus document, probably the field of CTO PCI is the one uh, more uh, represented in the literature. And there are um, very initial studies that documented that the CTA allows to identify some lesion characteristic that can be associated with Uh, less uh, procedural success. Uh, this include, of course, uh, the extent of classification at the entry site of the CTO, the length of the CTO, uh, the tortuosity of the occluded vessel, but also some collateral branches that can start in the uh, occluded portion. And then, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, the opportunity to analyze these factors because before deciding to try with a, a CTO PCI. Moreover, some uh, good prospective and randomized studies documented that the approach uh, city guided has been associated with uh, more procedural success, in particular in very complex CTO 
in terms of the anatomical score, for example, the JCTO score. So it has been documented that in this particularly complex anatomy to have for the interventionalist a roadmap provided by CTA may enhance and improve the rate of CTO PCI. And the limitations or evidence gaps, in your opinion, Professor? So I think that we have interesting studies that we also underline in our document. For example, the syntax studies in text two, in text three, showing uh, that CT coronary angiography may be useful. Also, in, at the apex of the pyramid of coronary artery disease, so in trivessel or left main coronary artery disease patient, for helping an RT in the decision making between a PCR or cabbage as actual treatment. Otherwise, I think that nowadays we need to have a randomized trial. So we have we need to have a randomized trial that try to compare the standard of care. So the standard PCI with uh, a city-guided PCI. So a, a PCI that can be supported by a CT performed before invasive angel, again, to try to provide the interventionalist on information. Also, that allows to select the material, to select the right personnel, As you know, if you have a distal left main bifurcation, if we have a long CTO, if we have a multivessel patient, the specific people and material need to be selected to do this, tri- this, type, of, this type of PCI. Otherwise, what is the major lack in the literature maybe nowadays is to demonstrate that this approach may be really useful in the clinical practice. So finally, Professor Adrini, any ongoing trials that we must be aware of? Yeah, I will uh, mention a couple of trials. One uh, in the very intriguing field of planning a cabbage procedure by a CTA approach only. And I have to mention the fast track cabbage trial. It is coordinated by Professor Sarais and is nowadays ongoing. Two thirds of the population uh, has been enrolled, and the initial findings are very positive because uh, the feasibility and point, so the capability of the surgeon to plan the vessel to be treated and the landing zone of the cabbage by using CTA alone is 100% at this time. And then, of course, we will see the final results in uh, one year, more or less. And I will also mention the P4 study, that is a randomized clinical trial worked with the team of Alst, Carlos Colin, Bernard de Bruin. We are randomizing patients with more than 70% stenosis at CTA and uh, CTFFR showing a value of below 0.8 to a standard of care, so to the IBUS guided PCI versus the CT guided PCI approach. City guided PCI, that means that the interventionists receive a so called CT package that includes a lot of parameters, including the osteum location, the plaque characterization, the lesion quantification, the CTFFR, and the real time guidance into the cat lab versus the standard of care. The primary endpoint of this trial is a, a clinical one and is the non-inferiority of CTA approach. So the results of this trial will be available in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So, so thank you, Professor, very much for all these uh, interesting things. And uh, it was a pleasure, a really pleasure, discussing with you all this stuff. Thank you very thank much. You. And uh, I also thank you, of course, to the first committee. That is a very nice committee of SCCT. And thank you for your very good activity in the society. Well, listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Remember, if you like what you hear from us on the podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe. For even more educational content, consider becoming a member of the SCCT if you aren't already. This is the Donut of Destiny. Cheers. Cheers.